Hi, and welcome back to Spirituality of the Spin. I am Ryan Keyes, your host. And today's topic is a little taboo, so I'm probably going to step on a few toes, I would guess. And I will try to keep the spiritual spankings to a minimum. No blues harmonica today. This is serious talk. This is talk that's related to hundreds and hundreds of people that I've worked with over the past year that are transitioning. They're entering a place of awareness, of ascension, of awakening. How they got there varies. How they're going to get through it doesn't. Whether you're going through a divorce, whether you've met a, what you consider a twin flame or a karmic twin or a soulmate, and you need to move out of the relationship you're in because you don't feel it's serving you any longer, maybe this will help you to help yourself. I will see you inside. Hi, this is Ryan Keyes, and like I said in the intro, we are talking about something that is, in essence, taboo. I talk to so many people all the time about this particular subject, and the Twin Flame community already knows that a lot of people that are with someone and they have this catalyst cross their path, whether it ends up being karmic or whether it ends up being a stellar love fest, that remains to be seen. What it does do is it makes you aware of where you're at and where you're at suddenly is about waking up and it's like waking up next to someone that you don't know. You look over in bed and you're like, what the hell am I doing? Who is that? Why am I here? And what do I do? So we're going to talk a little bit about that today and how I help people help themselves. And we're going to talk about how you have a choice. The choice is going to be in how you voice your opinion, how you voice your circumstance, how you face this. Now you're not alone, and that's why we establish groups. That's why I have a Toronto group, a Vegas group, a tri-state group up in New York. That's why I'm gonna have a Florida group. That's why I'm gonna have a group in Texas. That's why we have a group forming in Brazil and why we're gonna have one forming in Spain. Because this is a grassroots movement to help people gain traction in getting better. Everything that you need is right inside of you. Everything that you need to, to do Everything that you need to know, everything that will help you to grow is inside. It's like when you drop a seed in the ground in the earth. The earth, the soil, has everything it needs to nurture that seed to complete fruition to form a plant. All it needs is outside influence from a higher source, the sun, and some loving, nurturing, some river of life, that water to nourish it, which would be love. So, you're with somebody and it's not working out. You suddenly woke up or someone crossed your path, perhaps someone you met has entered your life, maybe an old flame or the twin flame or divine purposed partnership or a soulmate. Something has happened that has raised awareness that you are not in the right place and you don't know what to do. Number one, one thing that you need to always understand. If you have children, the children are always, always closer to source than you are. They may not say what they see, but they see through anything that you put up that's a facade. If you are faking it, they know it. They can feel it. That's why a child, a baby, you can put a baby in someone's arms and it will say, start crying and it won't like that person and it'll like somebody else because their children are very empathic. They're very connected to source. So if you do have children, covering up your pain, covering up your hurt isn't the way to put them in a place where they can advance and where they will understand the true nature of what love is. Being in something that is hurting you and hurting the other person just because you feel that you're saving a spot to raise children under a roof with a mom and dad, that's a good idea. And if it works for you, that's fine. But just to put another spin on it, since that's spirituality with a spin, to put another spin on it, You've got this being that's crossed over, that's so connected with source, that pretends 
only to play, that sees strife and nothing, that can make a dragon out of a bush. Do you not think this child is so perceptive that they will, they will be able to see that you're hiding pain inside, that you're disconnected? They'll know if mommy and daddy aren't getting along. Now, what you may be showing them is a dysfunction, believing you're covering it up. You might have swept that elephant under the rug, but that child is so aware he's going to see that elephant because he's empathic. She's empathic. So be aware of that first and foremost, and also be aware that expectations and excuses go hand in hand. You may have entered this relationship or this marriage or whatever it is, this agreement, under the pretense that you were following a certain level of assumption and expectation. Perhaps your family was putting pressure on you, perhaps you felt that's what was necessary, or that's what is the protocol for where you live or what you're doing. Now all of a sudden you're starting to wake up. A relationship crosses your threshold, wakes you up, cat is a catalyst to consciousness, and you're like, I'm not happy. I don't feel right. I don't have the intimacy. I don't have the sensitivity. I don't, I'm not getting the touch. Our sex life sucks. We're not connected. I don't love the other person. I feel like they're controlling. All those things are legitimate complaints. But what you need to understand is the person that came into your life that created the catalyst is not the reason why you are feeling this way. They are not <laughs> the answer. They're not the aspirin to your headache. You may end up being with them, and it's a good, and if it's a good thing and it works out, that's perfect. However, you can never leave a situation because you're leaving one to go to another. You have to evaluate the situation that you're in. You have to look for evidence of what it is that's going wrong. Provide that evidence as awareness through conversation and communication, through a level of understanding so that your partner is going to be completely aware of how you're feeling. I don't want to tell him. I don't want to tell her. If I tell her, I'm going to hurt her. Well, if you don't, you're going to hurt him. Either way, it hurts going full steam ahead. The thing is, is that when you come from the heart, there's going to be a place of healing on the other side. If you come from the head, healing is going to take twice as long. Because when someone is talking to you from the heart, like we're doing right now, you can feel the difference. You can feel when somebody is feeling for you, when somebody is seeing eye to eye with you, and they care about you. They've just grown. They've just changed. Something has happened. Perhaps it never was what you thought. Perhaps they were lying to themselves in the beginning. Now they've found out their true self. They've found out their authentic self. And the person they showed you was a lie. The person they showed you in the beginning was from the head. Now that they've connected to their heart, connected to their source, their self, they're seeing their truth. They're seeing their life without expectation. They're seeing, finally, the light. So, when you have that discussion, come from a place of compassion. Come from a place of caring. Come from a place where you see yourself in them. You don't have to stay and struggle in a situation if you feel like it's going to be endless. Like I just told a friend of mine, if it started out broken, you're not going to fix it. If it was never built from the bottom up, it's going to always tip over because you're working on the top. You have to have a foundation. If you didn't begin with that in mind, if you didn't start with a spark, if your relationship started out with vibrancy, with love, with all of these things, and you walked into it without the expectation, there was no pressure from family, there was no pressure to settle down, there was no pressure to have a family or people around you were getting married. If you did this at full volition from your heart, from your love, from the elevation of self, and let's say something happened, let's say maybe your husband got a, a different job, or maybe you had a child and you felt disassociated from the situation, well now maybe that's fixable. You can go back and work on that. Maybe you got some kind of addiction during the course of that. Maybe you dealt with maybe uh, smoking or drugs or alcohol, or maybe you had some stress that you dealt with, or maybe there was a physical ailment that created this rift. Now if you started out solid and good and of a of source, if you started out at the place where you saw yourself complete, where you saw yourself fully, where you were self-aware, you can go back to that place. You can find solutions there. 
But if you started out with the wrong pretense, if you started out not believing that that person was enough, or if you started out thinking they needed to be fixed, or that you could stand in the gap for them, or you could make a difference in their life, well, maybe it's time to reevaluate. Maybe it's time to understand that what you thought was never was. Maybe you were going with a mindset of this is going to be like a Disney ending as long as I just do the right thing, get the two cars, have the two kids, get the white picket fence, live in the suburbs, go to the right store, eat organic, go out and hang out with the neighbors, have cookouts. Maybe you thought that's all it took. Maybe you thought that would be the elixir of life. And then all of a sudden, this twin flame experience happens. Someone comes into your life, whether that's karmic catalyst or whether it will be the love of your life. Regardless of who or what it is, it is change and it has come for you and it is waking you up. This is a tough place. This is a place for evaluation. This is a place of separation. This is a place where you will ultimately be able to bridge your suffering through a new form of salvation of seeing yourself. It's a solid place, but it takes work. As deep as you went into the cave, you have to walk the same distance back out. Healing doesn't start overnight. It's a process. Getting to know yourself takes a daily work. As we talk about in the mirror work that I have everybody do that works with me, it's a daily, daily grind. Spending time with yourself. You shower, you brush your hair, you wash your clothes, you tie your shoes, you brush your teeth. These are daily regimens. These become almost unconscious. They take care of you in an unconscious fashion. You go through them, you don't even think about how many times you brush your teeth. You don't even think about how many times you comb your hair. It just gets done because you know it needs to be done. And this is how you need to start focusing on finding that fullness within yourself. We've been sold a bill of goods. We've been sold a concept. We've been sold an ideology that this is happiness. We've been told that you got to strive very hard. You have to work and buy a house. You have to have kids. You have to get married at a certain age. That, As one of the people that I love to listen to said, I was told I had an expiration date. Well, there is no expiration. The soul is unlimited. The soul has unlimited potential to love. It has awareness. It has self-esteem. It has everything that you need to go forward full steam. So hypothetically, let's imagine the twin flame or the soulmate or this karmic twin walked into your life, the perfect person at the imperfect time. You're married, you're in a relationship, something's going on in your life. Don't leave the relationship for that person. You're not leaving the relationship because the person came into your life. If you have a life with that person in the future, perfect, that's great. But the one thing you have to do is you have to find completion. You have to find how to face who you are, where you are, and what's going on in your life. You just can't run from it, and you just can't run from one thing to another. You have to find a place to build your foundation. See yourself. This is about you doing your work. Because if you leave one situation that you just gravitated to in the beginning, and it wasn't you, and you developed a whole life around it, you made a whole story around something that you've now decided isn't your story, don't go doing it again. The person, if they're of God, if they're of the divine, if this is a, a person that you believe is your forever, they'll wait. They'll wait for you to do the work. If they don't need to do any work themselves, maybe they're doing work too. Maybe you guys are going to go apart and you're going to separate for a time and you're going to do your own work together. Or maybe this person is a catalyst. Maybe this person isn't going to be the person you're going to end up being with the rest of your life. Maybe this person was designed to come in and just kind of shake things up. You never know. The one thing you do know is how you're feeling right now where you're at. You know the feelings that are bubbling up inside. You know that you feel like something isn't right, something's amiss. These things have to be addressed in the way that you need to address those with the person that you're currently with. Now, if that person that you're currently with gets wind of the other person crossing your path, it devalues and it literally destroys the essence of awareness and truth and consciousness that comes from this entire process. Think about that. If you leave for another person, and that's the catalyst that creates this momentum to push you out of the relationship, the other person, even your children, 
are going to feel this very momentum. And don't feel alone. I talk to hundreds and hundreds of people and a lot of people are going through this. Because what happened, society put a lot of pressure on us. There's a lot of roles, there's a lot of things that we do, that we did, that weren't us. I mean, how many people have bought a car and then you realize you couldn't pay for it? How many people have gone out and done something and the second thought you were like, I didn't even want to do that? Or how many people even go out and they drink and they get drunk and they, this is the worst night they ever had and they're like, man, I wish I'd never done that. So there's a lot of things that society tells you to do that isn't good for you. There's a lot of concepts that we create our life around that never were actually us. We allow our family to influence us. We allow our friends to influence us. We allow the media to influence us. We allow society to just step in and stick its sticky fingers inside of our shorts and go and pull at us and tug at us and prevent us from living that life that echoes the very awareness, the very evidence of our soul being put into this portion of our body and activated. If you want to be active and activated, become aware. Become self-aware of the power that's inside of you. Don't underestimate that power. Don't underestimate that awareness. Thank Source for the catalyst. And if it is meant to be, it will be. Everything you've agreed to, everything is a, con as a contract, everything has been agreed to so that you can push forward and push through. <laughs> and that shaking was my dog's collar. <laughs> He's like the highlight of my day. If you focus, if you feel it, you have to feel it. It has to be for you. This shift has to be because your soul is sitting down inside of your body and seeing things differently. It's not because you're bouncing around in life like a pinball out of control going from one thing to the next. Divine waits. Divine works. Divine is going to be there when you need them. Remember that. This is an evolution of self. This is a tough subject. You got divorce and then you got that. You have divine partnership. Sometimes there is divorce. Sometimes things dissolve. There's a disillusionment. But everything is a decision. Everything echo is a choice. Speak the truth in your voice. Allow the person the respect that you are facing why you need to leave the relationship not looking towards why you need to go forward to the next one. That will take care of itself. Do the work, it will work out. Remember, check in, my, check in the upper box, mirror work. The mirror work program is a PDF program. It is a 10 day, 10 minutes a day, reconnection of soul and self. I've got so many people doing it. The success is brilliant in it. It's how when I got my face crushed, it's how I began to see myself and see myself the right way. This is something that I designed for you specifically. It's free. Sign up. You get it. Remember, if you do the work, it will work out. But it takes you buckling down and getting serious. It takes you digesting this bit by bit, going forward with bearing fruit of truth, authentic self, awareness, compassion, love, faith, and seeing yourself in other people. See yourself in all things. If you can see yourself in all things around you, that's the secret. You don't need to do anything else. Your whole essence changes. The shift just goes boom like that right away. So if you need further help, I do coaching. If you need to reach out and you want to become part of my masterclass, we broke it down monthly. It's two cups of coffee a month, but don't send me coffee bean. <laughs> okay. And sign up for my mirror work program. It is free and it will help change your life. It is the spark to start your fire of forging ahead. It is phenomenal. I've got so many people that have done it. They're loving it. It is exciting. If you're not part of my groups on Facebook, get involved. This is a community based on you helping you help yourself and getting like-minded people around you to come together so you have people to talk to, people to to converge with, people to merge with, people that want to be there for you, that understand you, that aren't going to judge you, that aren't going to throw false assumptions on you, that aren't going to put these elaborate expectations on you. They just want to love you. They just want to hug you. They just want to sit and say, hey, I'm here for you. What do you need? Let's listen to each other. And that's what it takes. 
Peace, light, and love, and I will see you on the other side.